veterans of Vainglory there. Yeah, some of their bands, they actually ban um, Grumpjaw on A side, then Kashka on B side. They tend to ban Grace, Baron, depending on what the enemy, enemy team bans. So I do see Grumpjaw, Baron becoming the potential bans here. And Grace they take. are going to ban Grace here on that A side. And now this leaves Baron open. So are they going to take Baron here or are they going to take Lyra? Let's see what Nova decides. Yep, they're going to go ahead and first pick that Baron, which is pretty smart. However, I know Gangstars knows how to play against a lot of compositions. So as long as they do not screw up their draft, um, I think they will be fine. Yeah, and there are ways to deal with the Baron as well. Typically by getting someone who can you know, jump onto the back lines and get a lot of assassination burst damage. Uh, something like you know, Taka does very mm -hmm. well. Uh, Blackfeather can do pretty well into Baron. Uh, Grace is probably one of my favorite Baron counters, but obviously it was a band away. So it's a very smart band by Nova expecting to get, you know, very likely get this Baron through. Yeah. I mean, Lyra also kind of enables teammates to fill that role of being able to go against Baron because you give them that gap closer. Sweet Jacob. Yeah, Blackfeather will probably be picked here by Gangstars because Batiste, Grumpshaw, and Kashka are banned, and normally Blackfeather is one of those top four junglers that a lot of people pick. Or they can even go with Samuel and give that to Xenotech, but I feel like BF would make the most sense here because you can flex him as well. And CPBF is actually really good into Baron because of his range and his ability to dive onto Baron. Um, and, and stick to him. So Blackfeather will probably be the smartest pick here, but you, you never know. They may go with another option here, but I feel like CBF would be the best decision. I like the Koshka ban, I like the Batiste ban, because those two heroes are really strong with Lyra or Baron, actually, on both sides. So the draft is going out pretty well. They're going to go with an Idris here, which, which is a good pick, because Idris, again, melee counters Baron, because he can get onto him and force Baron to play defensive. Yeah, it's also another one of those heroes that can just dive into the Baron if need be. When the jump jets come out, Idris, Idris can use his ult and not be available for a target for those uh, the double rockets. So there are ways to definitely outplay the Baron as an Idris. Samuel going to come through for Nova. And this is one that, again, can just has the potential to take over a game if it's not kept in check. Yeah, they're probably going to take Arden with Samuel here because that will counter Taka um, from the side of Gangstars here. So Arden will most likely come out unless they want Starboy and Lance, which they actually have preferred him on Lance over anything else. But instead, they're going with Kath to directly counter the Idris. So that's actually a really smart pick there by, by Nova to basically counter Idris because Kath is very good into Idris. So I see Gangstars here, given the composition of Nova, I think what makes sense for them is a, a potentially the CP, uh, BF, or they can even do a Taka if they want to be a little more risky, so to speak, and just dive onto that Baron um, and force him to build defense. Because a weapon Idris and a Crystal Taka, that's a lot of burst damage coming out. We'll see if the Taka will be the final lock in here for Gangstars. Not decided just yet, still 10 seconds on the There's clock. There's also CP Glaive. It's going to be Black Feather coming on through in the end alongside that Idris. So we'll see how these compositions are going to pan out. A lot of damage on both sides though. These are very, very damage heavy compositions and both teams with very little CC actually. You've kind of just got Catherine Stunt and that's about it across both compositions. So this is going to be a lot about positioning and, and a lot about who can actually burst people down quickest. Yeah, Catherine Stun, uh, the Oblivion, but that's obviously nowhere near as frequent as the Catherine Stun. So it is going to be tough to lock down anyone in this game, which is, I, I feel like gives a slight edge to the side of Gangstars because they have a little bit more, you know, dive and mobility throughout these team fights. So not being able to lock down those targets could cause problems if they get onto the Baron and Samuel. All right, Sweet Jay, what are your I, thoughts? I really like Xenotech on Blackfeather. He's done phenomenal on it. It's CP Blackfeather with a Lyra you're talking. That's going to win early game against a Samuel and a Catherine. And Baron's going to have a rough time getting to his late game if they're going to snowball the jungle. So I think Gangstar is going to take this, this game. All right, so we're certainly favoring Gangstars on the desk. We want to know who you guys at home are favoring as well. Hashtag Vainglory on Twitter. Get in touch. Let us know who you are going to be supporting moving on forwards in the Vainglory 8. But we're going to be jumping on into this game shortly. It is Gangstars up against Nova. Nova making their debut here on the Halcyon Fold here on the mainstream up against Gangstars, one of the top American teams coming on into this one. We actually spoke to Iraqi Zoro back in London about his team. I'm really disappointed with my personal performance because I don't think I played really well, especially in the last game. Props to my teammates for 
making sure they alleviate some pressure off of me and you know perform really well so that they can carry me through the games. And you know, I remember the Gangstar games from London, and it was Xenocheck just stepping up to an entirely new level, level with Scoundrel. Now we'll have to see Iraqi Zora on a incredibly mechanically adept hero like Idris. He's going to really have to be pulling his weight if he wants to go up against this Baron. Yeah, and, and I think Iraqi Zoro, he, he has had some up and down performances in his career, but he's generally been very consistent. Uh, Xenotech has only got better and better the longer that he has been playing with this Gangstar's roster, so it's a good thing to keep an eye on him. It's going to be a Weapon Power Idris, it looks like, and a CP Black Feather in the jungle. Dowsy, I think I'm usually the analyst here, but when it comes to Weapon Power Idris, I feel like I might have to hand the reins over to our resident Idris one trick. What do you what do you feel like this matchup goes like, especially as the game progresses? Um, so typically in Europe, you usually pair oh, the Idris with an Arden. Araki Araki's in a lot of trouble. Very hard. This this matchup's very hard for Idris. Early on, Idris is is going to struggle because of the lane pressure that the Catherine has. That's why you paired it with a a um a Lyra here, is so that Idris has the healing and has a bit of backup so that he can take this harass from both Starboy and Truth in the lane. Um, typically, Idris can blow up Baron, but it's going to rely a full coordination from the side of Gangstars. The portal on top of Baron with the Bright Bulwark needs to be imperfect, essentially, so that Idris can dive on top of the Baron, blow him up with his combo, and when eventually when the Bright Bulwark does expire, if Baron's not dead by then, Idris can obviously follow up with a Shimmer Strike, follow the Baron to wherever he lands. Um, Starboy, he's going to have his work cut out for him. Catherine, very good into Idris, can stun him instantly and really just cut down the combo. So uh, I, I feel like Starboy is going to be the key to really keeping Truth alive. But, you know, that sounds dumb considering he's the captain, even more so than usual. Man, Dowsy could literally talk about uh, Idris for days as, wow, very low veins going on this Lyra. They're going to jump forward and put pressure on Xenotech here. I've now become the play-by-play -play somehow. <laughs> Not sure how this has happened, but it has. You, you started this. You said I had to do the analysis. <laughs> so that means you have to do the play-by-play. -play. Actually, uh, by the way, something we didn't touch on. Gangstar did get first blood in the jungle. Yep. Uh, it's because a lot of pressure from Truth and Starboy in the lane here, trying to put pressure onto Iraqi Zoro early on, did allow Veins and a level 2 Xenotech to pressure a Samuel, which I think was losing some of the massive power spike that you have here as the Nova composition. Samuel, one of the best level 2 duelists in the game, and you left him alone in the jungle in favor of trying to put pressure onto Xenotech on this Idris. So you did, you did allow your early power spike from Low Delphi to kind of get dragged out a bit as another little fight taking place here. Oh, Delphi and Lone. it's just happened again. This is going to be troublesome if they continue allowing Lone Delphi to be poked out here. Idris very good into both Baron and Samuel because of his blow up potential. And when you pair that with the um, poke that Xenotech can put out with a Black Feather, we know that his Black Feather is you know, fantastic, then you, you're you going to have your work cut out for you because typically gangstars are going to actually want to start the fight off by poking as much as possible if they can at range. With Chakrams, we've on points before looking for an all-in engage. Absolutely. They're going you know, to they're, they're want to be able to put pressure on this roster. But again, you are going up against a drifting dark Malisomedic Samuel who is going to be able to, with Frostburn, put massive pressure on you, make sure that Truth can potentially hit a couple of those basic attacks that could start to hurt as the game progresses. And you do have Starboy, who can soak damage in poke compositions on this Catherine. You just have him stand at the front, proc his Storm Shield, suddenly he starts tanking on points, tanking Chakrams, and you lose a little bit of the efficacy of them, the, the ability for them to have the impact that you want them to. As Starboy again starts to put pressure onto Xenotech in the jungle here, he will just... Uh, I think he's trying to spam the recoil to get that wonderful glitchy recoil bug, but uh, not going to happen. <laughs> So many pros recently have rediscovered this bug where if you, um, it, it completely doesn't impact gameplay by the way, I just want to put that out there, but if you, uh, you, you recall and move at the same time, you kind of do this shuffle uh, across the ground that looks really funny, um, more so tilts your opponent if you're ahead and you're just doing it all around, I know I certainly got tilted uh, when some members of the European pro community did it to me in three man queue, uh, but <laughs> Moving along, Excoundrel, before I, I derail the entire cast here. Um, it hasn't been a, a terrible start for Nova. They, they've maintained no. early pressure from the side of Xenotech and Araki. Um, in fact, in the lane, it, it's been Truth trying to put the pressure on. Now, he has to be careful because here comes Xenotech looking for a gank. Bright Bulwark will stop him from jump jetsing away. And he's going to have it up in just a second. Founder comes out. He goes sideways instead of backwards. And Xenotech's able to find the snipe. Yeah, snipes him out with the on point there. 
Something that I really like about having the Black Feather is something that we always underestimate with Black Feather, by the way, Dalsy. The trail that he generates will be of use to Iraqi Zoro, especially when they're trying to follow up on a specific target, you get that movement speed boost. I think it's something that we kind of underestimate about focusing a single target when you're running a double melee composition. That, um... So sorry, that, that boost is, is, is incredibly important, Dalsy. Certainly is. Lone Delphi now in trouble, and you can see that trail being set up. Vayne's rushing forward. Iraqi needs to get in range. Doesn't even need it. Xenotech has the job and will take it down. Here comes Truth though. Truth can actually win this fight if he positions correctly, but Iraqi instantly dives forward. That shuts that one down right where he stood. Already hit that crucial point of unlocking the uh, divergent paths for the Idris, so he's now able to just instant, t instantly teleport when he uses his A. Here comes the ultimate Ooh, from This is Truth. huge. Ion. Okay. Forces the, fountain. I feel... Forces the fountain out of veins though. Now for Nova, they have to execute. They have to find a window of opportunity where they look for a kill. Fanes, of course, on Alira can provide healing and will provide healing. But there's 40 seconds now Nova can execute, and if they don't execute, then it's a hell of a waste. In fact, Truth has just got caught by Xenotech in the jungle here. But Xenotech, happy to take this duel. Truth now with Iraqi on his side. Oh, Shiver Strike over. Iraqi may miss the Chakram, but he finds the kill. Xenotech finds the Samuel, and uh, Starboy. He has his fountain up. I don't know what he was looking at in that fight, perhaps trying to save the uh, the Baron and not noticing that Lone Delphi was also in trouble. Hey, look, let's not, let's not criticize Starboy. It's a little known fact that he's actually the best player in North America, mate, so. <laughs> he, he, uh... XD. Anyway, I, I actually do want to sort of praise Starboy for something that I don't see too many Catherines do. He's just consistently stacking. Because Catherine is so powerful right now, because in part due to how good she is in certain competitions, but also in part due to that fact that her heroic perk got buffed by one shield and armor for every stack. So the more you stack Catherine, the quicker that she gets to a point where you have incredible resistances and it's very hard to take her down. So the more you can stack early game, the better it is to transition into the part, the part of the game where Catherine becomes very strong, which is in that later stage when you do have all those stacks. And we're at seven minutes in Starboy, he has already got 15, so that's 30 extra um, shielding and armor that he's already picked up. So that's, you know, already a lot of resistances that he has logged in the tank just from that early game pressure that he's putting, putting on with those stuns. Yeah, uh, it's uh, pretty pretty impactful for Starboy if he can build up those resistances, especially in the late game, can start tanking up the on points, the Chakrams. Um, Starboy did actually pop his fountain. And by, in the middle of nowhere by mistake. I assume it was a mistake. He's going to move in. He has his fountain up in just six seconds. Xenotech gets stunned, but here comes Vayne's diving straight on forward onto Lone Delphi and Troop. They can turn this fight over. They need to start laying down the damage onto these carries here. Araki, looking like he wants to go in, has Poison Shiv, can shut down the healing, but Starboy, if he's the front line, can do work. Iron Cannon won't find anything. Good disengage coming out of Gangstars. This is kind of where things become a bit sketchy, I think, for Gangstars, is if they don't blow up a target with their Arcane Passage in, then the re-engage potential uh, on the side of Nova is pretty huge. Starboy can just stun people, and Nova will be able to blow them up if that happens. Hey, Gangstars have got two components in their composition. Again, that range composition the part that they have. Oh, wait, 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 oh wait, Iraqi wait. Zoro takes a lot of damage, but once more, it's a fountain not quite saving the life of his Baron. Xenotech looking for the on point, doesn't hit it. Good dodge from Starboy. He survives as well from the Starboy harass really from good at keeping himself alive. Right. <laughs> he knows his damage. Uh, can take what he can take with damage. At the moment, Gangstars are just consistently finding a, a, a blow up, an assassination. Rocky? Rocky might be dead here. I feel like Lone Delphi kills him. Nope. Okay, never mind. I think the Crucible out there from Vayne's just kept Iraqi Zoro alive. It looks like a Xenotech here does have that stolen away from him, however. And he gets blown up. And he gets blown up. There you go. So, very aggressive positioning from Gangstars. They feel ahead, right? They do feel ahead, but again, you do have to respect the fact that if Nova do catch you, you have got a lot of burst damage coming through it's with this Baron and his tension collecting. bow right now. And obviously, if Samuel can land those empowered malice and verdicts, that's always incredibly hard to, and difficult to deal with. You've got also got to stress the fact that these are two very squishy melee carries, realistically. Idris, very easy to take down if you can lock him down, as is a CP Blackfeather. Doesn't build too defensively as a weapon power Blackfeather would. So, 
and doesn't have the, doesn't have the sustain built into his kit like a weapon power black feather would. So he's a little bit more of a squishy target to focus down. So if Nova can lock them down, and I always feel like Catherine is a really good um, hero to lock down those particular targets with, especially when you've got a lot of single target bursts from Nova. Um, you have, you have to be very careful about your positioning for gangsters because if you get um, caught by anybody from Nova, you know these two carries will very quickly hit the floor. Certainly will. Gangstar's doing a lot of good work here. Truth getting pressured down by these tracker rooms. Araki consistently hitting them onto Truth, and it just makes the defense of this turret so hard because Araki is able to reposition with his shroud step so quickly, turn things around. Baines takes a huge chunk of damage there, will be able to heal himself up over time. And these on points from Xenotech just off the side, out of, you know, field of view for the side of Nova makes things very difficult. They could look for a dive here, and I'm sure they will. Baines can set it up very nicely with the passage. Starboy's used his stun as well, but the Drifting Dark is not something you really want to fight in, so Gangstars will decide not to. This turret's very low, mind you. They could just stick around and look to poke it down. Truth is getting antsy. He wants to fight. He wants to kill Araki Zoro. And he's not really using those jump jets to the full capacity. The fountain will be used to heal everyone up. This is the fountain to heal themselves up so they can stay around to defend the turret. This turret is still very low. I feel like it's only a matter of time till Gangstars take it. Very Ooh. close here. Long range chakrams, long range on points coming out. This is the range that Gangstars can look to exploit. Remember, there's a very limited time using Drifting Dark where Lone Delphi can respond. So getting caught when he doesn't have that Drifting Dark up is important. First turret does go down for Gangstars. They can just disengage, but Nova didn't really give anything much more away. They didn't try and defend it with their life as Starboy runs in. Doesn't quite find the stun here. Got the Null Wave Gauntlet now, by the way. Already picked up that Null Wave Gauntlet. Very aggressive move in terms of itemization. Gets a bit of cooldown reduction, which Catherine does really use. Um, but, you know, they don't have anything like a, re a Crucible, which could be really useful at saving carries. They've gone for a a very aggressive movement in the form of that, uh, that no way corner. Araki dives in here. Can he find the damage onto Lone Delphi? Lone Delphi's in a lot of trouble. Xenotech looking for the execute. Oh, and he goes down. Truth now going to be targeted, but a good stun will hold him up. Xenotech might lose his life. No, never mind. It's Xenotech. I forget who I'm talking of. That's going to be the carries of Nova going down here. Now, I just want to touch on itemization from the Idris real quick. You do see Araki going towards the tier 3 armor here. I actually think from a lot of testing I've done, there's an argument be, to be made to, to skip armor completely and go towards a slumbering husk. Usually, Baron does a lot of burst damage. Darcy loves these slumbering husks. No, uh, I, I, uh, yeah, I do. I, I do. But it, it's into very specific heroes, and that very specific hero is Baron, who we've seen multiple times tonight. Yeah, sure. No, I agree. I mean, I, I haven't done enough testing on slumbering husk to sort of assess its value, but I do feel like it is something that should be maybe considered more so than armor. I don't think armor is that good against Baron, personally. Um, because realistically, he will hit hard. And even despite you having armor, it's a lot of AOE damage as well, a lot of sparse damage on those rockets. So even if he hits you, he might be doing damage to the rest of your team regardless. I think what's the best place to, to, to do with Baron is if you can get in before he lands that burst, and, and once that burst has been landed, Slumbering Husk will protect you from that. And that, that crucial moment after then, when he winds up for the next auto attack, if you, as long as you block the jump jet's double basic attack, you actually then have a big opportunity to jump in and start to blow him up. So I think I think, I think I could be on board with you that, Darcy. I think there's a, an opportunity there. Use the Slumbering Husk to negate the jump jet's double basic attack. Use that to tank it up as you move in onto him and then blow him up once you've, uh, once you've got into position. And this is what Gangstars are continuously doing. They are engaging fights. Araki does go low, but it's just going to be Lone Delphi targeted on down. Uh, Gangstars have realized they don't actually need to kill Truth every fight. They can go for Lone Delphi and it's going to be just as effective because then Truth doesn't have the support of a Samuel. And Araki going to make that Chakram dance and find himself another kill. Very nice stuff. Do lose veins in the process, but that's a win for Gangstars because they're keeping... Uh, uh, Truth off the Halcyon Fold, which means he's not farming and a CS deficit is being created uh, in favor of Iraqi. I would have this worry in the back of my mind, though, Dalcy, right now, that Truth is very close to four items. I, uh, that, that is the one, the one thing that I'm in the back of my mind thinking, that actually Truth is getting close towards another Tyrant's Monocle here. And something that we haven't really talked about is these fights... Although they are going against us favor, there is still an element of them that does feel quite close. The damage coming out from Truth is starting to hurt. That was Xenotech scraping his life, 
and veins obviously going down. So there is this element now in the back of my mind. I'm thinking actually, this Baron is coming towards a point where he could be fairly scary. Yeah, keep Rogers. an eye on that because it, because Nova's going to start so sort of truth is going to start scaling up pretty quickly here. And, and and you know without harping on, this is where the slumbering husk becomes so useful. You look at Xenotech, He's actually going towards an aftershock on this. Uh, this Black Fever, we had a conversation about Aftershock on CP Black Fever. Obviously, it used to be a standard build at one point, but has kind of fallen out meta uh, with the, the, you know, the rise of CP Black Fever recently. Uh, Xenotech wants to be on the front line. So, you know, if Xenotech and uh, Iraqi are both wanting to be frontlining here, getting those auto attacks off on their, you know, their both, you know, ranged kind of melee hybrids, then perhaps they need that capability to survive the burst damage that comes out of Truth. They are going to dive on in, but Truth managing to escape the snare of the Bright Bulwark, able to channel it just in time. That's when things become worrying. If they are diving onto Truth and not finding a kill, then they are going to take a significant amount of damage in return. And Gangstars is going to have to be ready to take it. Raki positioning, looking for the fight. Truth diving away. It's going to be Lone Delphi once more. Uh, targeted, but he's alive. Fountain and Truth is laying down some damage. Never mind, he's not sunk. It's going to be Raki stealing his life away. Starboy going to be trying to get Lone Delphi out of this one alive, but Araki doesn't want to have any of it, and that on point slows down, and the Chakram does connect. Gangstars are making this look easy. Starboy will lose his life next, Please. and that's going to be an ace coming through for Gangstars. But I remember now that Idris has also built up that tension bow, which, if I remember from my uh, Idris masterclasses from Dalsi, very good at bursting a single target, which is what kind of what tension bow is meant for. He, he finished that just before that last fight. Um, so he had, oh, sorry, he had that finished, between that and the last fight. So now he's finished it, he's now got an extra bit of single target burst to put pressure on Truth with. And Truth has been rushing those four items, which I think is very important for him to reach, but hasn't really invested that much into defense, especially as he's only sitting on a singular light armor at this point in time. Kraken is now on the board. I also really like that Xenotech is now pushing further towards a clockwork. Something oh, a that clockwork. I've always okay. felt about CP Blackfeather. So he's finished it now. Um, something that I've always liked about Super Black Feather is he, he kind of falls off towards the late game. There's a big fight poking up there. It is a big fight. Lone Delphi off to the side. Truth cannot escape the Shimmer Strike. That's how powerful it is chasing him down, and Lone Delphi gets slowed. It's going to be Xenotech chasing. Huge jump forward, and that's going to be a, another kill going over to Xenotech. Araki trying to deal with Starboy. Struggling a little bit, but he's going to get the uh, assistance of Xenotech, and he's going to secure a triple kill for himself. His Black Feather is ridiculous as the game gives him that title, and Ace comes through for Gangstars and Nova are uh, falling to the wayside. Yeah, I think this could just be a push for win for Gangstars. Again, like I was going to say, I really love that Xenotech didn't rest on just the Shattered Glass and the, the Broken Myth. I love that he went for the Clockwork. I do feel like in the late game, there is a lull in uh, Black Brother, uh, CP Black Brother's damage if you just have the Shattered Glass and the uh, Broken Myth. Looks like we're going to be ending the game right here, right now though, Darcy. Yep, it is just going to be Gangstars taking this one away. Never allowed Truth to really get online. Neither did Lone Delphi either. It's the risk of running uh, an eggs, uh, a double, you know, late game threat is that when you've got melee heroes that can blow you up, target you down, that uh, if you never hit that stage, you're, you're going to really struggle to survive a game like this. So the, I think compositionally, Gangstars were always in an advantage because they had the ability to just dive a, a, a Baron and I think that's something that's really important that you if you dive a Baron and you have a composition that both your carries can do that if you wipe them out suddenly there's a Samuel and Samuel is really good at pretty much all stages of the game but it's towards the late game once his drifting dark is down he doesn't really have that much of an impact in team fights so if you can burst the Baron and then deal with the Samuel afterwards you're going to be pretty happy. Yeah, certainly. Bright stuff coming out of Gangstars as they show that Baron can be dealt with. If you counter him, we'll have to throw it back to our desk to break that one down further. Yeah, that certainly seems to be a recurring theme of today, doesn't it? That there's these very powerful picks, but if you can draft correctly, you can still play around it. It's not like Baron and Grump Jora are undefeatable and an excellent showing of Gangstars doing exactly that here. Fantastic game from them, 16 to 3 final score. Gangstar's looking on top of the world right now. Yeah, definitely. We're able to take the fight to Nova, jumping onto this Baron pretty constantly, making sure that he didn't have the ability to get himself farmed up and fed to that late game point, mm -hmm. which is what we were saying in the draft. Like, this composition that Gangstar's had was built to take out that Baron.
Yeah, and Iraqi had amazing uh, Simmer Strike ultimates, just dodging a lot of damage and just getting onto Baron and blowing him out when Baron was trying to jump away. And Xeno too, I mean, Blackfeather with his ultimate was just so mobile and, and with the poke as well and the execute, he's just able to take out Baron so quickly. And I wish Nova did their homework because Blackfeather has been played now by Gangstars four out of the six past games that they played so far and i'm counting this game today so they definitely need to do something when it comes to the draft here regarding black feather if they want to play a really squishy uh carry either take the black feather or don't give it to xenotech i feel yeah either pick it or ban it those are your two options and we'll in a few minutes we'll be able to have a look at xenotech's kda as well because he had a ridiculously good game yeah. on that black feather but yeah, generally speaking, these team fights just, it felt like Nova just couldn't seem to get a grasp of, of what they wanted to achieve in these fights. Gangstars were just coming at them thick and fast, and there was very little that, that Nova could do to actually react appropriately. Yeah, it, it was just too much burst, again, not having really any lockdown. It was another thing that we touched on before we got into the game was there. there's only two forms of crowd control entirely on the side of Nova, and it, just, it wasn't enough. Yeah, so the Black Feather actually 12, 2, and 4 was the scoreline coming out Oof. there from Xenotech, which, I mean, that, that bolsters what you were just saying, Suijay. Maybe this is something that you just can't really let Xenotech, Xenotech have anymore. Yeah, for sure. And plus, combined with Lyra, that's why Xenotech was able to get a first kill so early against Samuel. Samuel just can't do much in a jungle. Mm -hmm. And Black Feather with Lyra is a very strong combo that we saw Armada actually pick a lot of when they had Baron on A side and just went through the gauntlet, so to speak. So this is something that teams need to definitely be aware of and make sure that they have a plan against if they're going to give Xenotech or a top team a Black Feather Lyra composition. All right. So speaking of planning then coming on into this second game, how how where, what changes right here for Nova to actually get back into these drafts and, and get back into the series in general? Like, it, do you have to really focus on that Black Feather specifically or is there just way too much to ban in that scenario? Yeah, I think if they took Baron with Black Feather, they had a better composition along with Kath. Mm -hmm. They can just basically stun and then Black Feather can then on point the person that's stunned and then Baron can jump in and just burst that person out. That's a, that's a lot of damage yeah. from CP Black Feather and Baron. So I felt like a CP Black Feather would have been better because it not only is a good combo with Baron and Catherine, but also denies you know, a, a CP Black Feather Lyra composition along with Idris. Like that both can just dive onto a Baron. Like I said, melee, counters Baron. If anyone get onto him and do so much damage, he has to play defensive, and he just yep. won't survive. Do we still expect things like Vox to be banned coming into this one? Because we've seen Vox banned a huge amount today. We've actually seen very little Vox play across the board, which is a stark contrast to what we saw last week. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just an interesting way that, again, the, the priorities have shifted week to week. And uh, with the Vox, I feel like it's it's probably going to still be focused. I don't know if it's going to be banned this time around. I just, I don't feel like it's, there's too many things to ban away. Mm -hmm. And the Vox, while it is very strong, it's just, I, I don't feel like it's going to be first picked by Gangstars. And so maybe Nova lets it through and they take it themselves. All right, we'll have to see if that's going to be the case. I want to talk a little bit about Nova here in terms of their, their position in the standings and such. They, they've not had a great start to the Vainglory, it's fair to say. Is this a situation now where you're 1-0 down, you're against the ropes, you're not doing well in terms of score? Do we see something cheesy come out? Do we see something where Nova maybe pulls something really out of left field <laughs> out just to try and get a win on the board, just to get themselves on the scoreboard at all? Yeah, I feel like they need to get on a hero that Truth just excels on. You know, when during Challengers, he just carried so hard on a weapon Kestro, mm -hmm. and the composition made sense for, his, for what they were playing. And uh, right now, Truth has the most deaths in VGA. He has six and a half deaths per game as the carry right now. So they need to really figure things out from a draft perspective. All right, well, draft is already underway and they are rattling through. It's going to be Kestrel and Grace Band away from this one. Lyra is the first pickup, though. Gangstar's really liking going with that Lyra Veins. Obviously, very comfortable on that pickup. And this has been a consistent first pick generally across the last few weeks. It's kind of, if you don't want to go for those heavy power picks like the Grub or like the Baron, and Lyra's a very good fallback. Yeah, Vox is open now. Vox would be a great pick for Nova. Truth is very proficient on Vox. I like Gangstar's draft here, denying a strong hero that Truth is excels at, which is Kestrel. And then Nova bans Grace and they take Lyra, which means that they have one of 
two out of two of the strongest healers, they got one of them. So really good pick by Gangsters here. Nova is going to go ahead and actually instead take the Batiste and ban Blackfeather, which is actually very smart because Blackfeather CP is really good into Batiste, especially once he gets level 8. It's also just taking Blackfeather away from Xenotech, forcing him to have to play something else because he has played it so frequently. However, uh, I would assume that Gangstars may just go ahead and ban away the Vox this, on this pick here. Yeah. Because, again, they've already taken out the Kestrel from Truth. Now if they take away the Vox from him, we mentioned Truth has been struggling. He has been really struggling this season. And if you force him onto these picks that he's not as comfortable on, it's very likely to continue, but they're going to go ahead and take away the Samuel. That's an interesting ban because maybe they think they're going to do a Captain Batiste here and then pick Samuel for Delphi. So maybe they're targeting Delphi because Delphi is a really good uh, Samuel player. So now this leaves Vox open for no. They need to take Vox here because Poison Shift Vox is very good against Lyra. And they mm -hmm. can't give over a Lyra Vox composition to Gangstar. So if they do not take Vox here, they're going to really put themselves in a tough spot when it comes to draft. We also have Adagio Grumpjaw and Adagio Glaive open. So Gangstars is known to play a double heal with a weapon carry hero as well in jungle. And that's that's something that Nova needs to watch out for as well. So the Idris going to be locked on in here for Nova. Going very aggressive with this composition. A lot of damage available for Nova. We'll see what they're going to finish this one off with for captain-wise. What do we think about this Idris pick? I mean, Idris is... It has strengths, but I just it's a bit early in the draft to pick it up for me for a team that is struggling. If you're a team that is very confident in your abilities, then you can go ahead and grab that Idris and just feel like you can outplay your opponents. But I just don't feel like Nova are at a situation where that's necessarily the case. Vox is, again, very likely a, to be an option here for Gangstars unless they do want to go for the Adagio Grumpjaw. Uh, Grumpjaw is a pick that Xenotech is very much a fan of playing, so... We could very much see that, but it's going to be the Baron. We didn't even really touch on the fact the Baron was still open this yeah. late in the draft. Both Baron yeah. and Grumcho made it through the bands, and, like, and that could just be a double pick, right? Baron isn't that good to Idris, but Lyra's Bulwark does limit his mobility, Idris' mobility. But also, if they have Batiste, why are they picking Idris? Because Batiste is really good against melee. Um, so Gangstar is going to go ahead and take Baron with a CP Grumpjaw. Again, this kind of worries me because if Nova can get to scale and get that Batiste to scale, it's, he's going to outscale the, the, the CP Grumpjaw here. So this is looking like a very interesting matchup now. I think it could be even. All right, so Sweet Jay not confident with Gangstar's draft so far. Bacon, what are you thinking for this final pick for Nova? Well, they're going to have to get someone who is tanky. And so I think like Arden would fit that bill, but they're going to go with a Rhyme. So this is going to be the Captain Batiste. The, the Rhyme is iffy against the Baron. Uh, for me, just because Rhyme wants to stick on a target and be right up next to them. Obviously, after the jump jets are down, then the Baron is very susceptible, but he should never really be in range to have that be a threat. We'll see if that's going to be the case. Very heavy melee composition coming out, but also, what are we assuming? Captain uh, Batiste? Yeah. Is that the only one out of these three that can be a captain, I'd assume? Yeah, it's going to be Captain Batiste for sure, I feel. Uh, Rhyme is going to be a very hard counter into Grumpjaw. Mm -hmm. He's going to get rooted. Yep. There's a Batiste Ordain. There's a Rhyme Stun. There's a lot going on in a Nova's kit to shut down the Grumpjaw. But they do need to get onto that Baron because if they let Iraqi just hail damage from afar, then they'll, they'll probably lose a lot of the fight. So they need to find a way to get onto the Baron. Yeah, and I mean, we saw that Iraqi very proficient with Baron from last season, from the last times we've played him, or we've seen him played as well. We want to know who you're supporting going into potentially the final game of Saturday here. It's going to be Gangstars up against Nova. Hashtag Vainglory8 is how you can let us know who you're going to be voting for as we head onto the Halcyon Fold. Let's pass it over once again to our casters. Thank you very much, Mungibles. And it is Nova looking for their first win here in the North American VG8 since being promoted uh, last split. Going to be looking for it with a rhyme, though, at Scoundrel. Talk to me about what you think perhaps could be the problem with picking rhyme, though, into Gangstar's composition. So, rhyme traditionally is very bad into double ranged, um, just because he needs to have the ability to get a lot of regeneration in the middle of a team fight. He's traditionally picked into, you know, frequently into heavy melee compositions. For rhyme to function in this composition, he's A, going to need to get early journey boots or 
off the back of war treads um, from Starboy, or they are going to rely on Starboy to land Ordains, or they are going to rely on, rely on Starboy to land Ordains. So it's it's very important that he either functions off mobility or functions off the back of those Ordains from Starboy. Very interesting rotations coming out of Nova. They actually sent Truth towards the backs to help out Lone Delphi. Now, Rhyme's known for his power farming ability. We'll hit level two off his fronts, but it's going to be Gangstar securing this uh, treant for themselves in the center. And now Starboy's in a bit of trouble. Lone Delphi will be turned upon. Good Bad Mojo will slow everyone down. Fantastic ability, Bad Mojo. 60% slow for about a second. It's pretty, pretty strong at uh, allowing your, your, your folks to, to escape. If there's one point in the game that you can look to try and punish a rhyme, it's definitely early on. And if you're going to have those early double weapon blades in the jungle going towards what's looking to be like an on-hit build for the Grump Jaw, you could try and put pressure on Rhyme earlier rather than later. Because if you get to the late game, when you get that mobility built up, you know, you get Journey Boots rushed quite early for Lone Delphi, you're going to have War Treads for Starboy. They might actually be able to catch up to Iraqi and land that route, which is very important, you know, even post Jump Jets from Iraqi Zoro. So I think there is a point in the game where Gangstars have a massive advantage. The other thing that you should think about is as the game progresses, you still have a Baron, right? It's still a Baron, he's still gonna scale. We've got to fight. Yeah, we've got to fight. Lone Delphi looking for Xenotech here. Going to be charging on forward. Truth also in lane, doing a bit of work for the Chakrams to, uh, to really chunk through. But Nova not able to find anything there, so they are just going to rotate towards the center and secure this Elder Trian. Yeah, nothing too big coming off the back of that. Starboy able to shut down Grumpjaw. That's kind of what Batista's picked Ooh, into. Starboy is down. very dead. Oh, no, he's not. Yes, he is. There it is. Auto attack comes out. First blood goes over to Iraqi. I don't know why he stepped forward. Can Lone Delphi clean up? Good route, but Truth doesn't have his Chakram just yet. Throws it out now. Can they get in range? Iraqi's got the escape, but maybe Xenotech doesn't. The Scout Trap gonna secure the kill. And does it go over to Starboy? Yes, it does, of course. He throws a thanks out as it goes down as well. I, I actually like that Iraqi knew that he could potentially execute himself on the scout trap and you give the gold over to Starboy. Other, um, that, sorry, uh, you're giving the gold over to Starboy instead of giving it over to something like Truth or Lone Delphi because they would have probably functioned better with that little bit of extra gold income in that situation. I, I, as, the, as the game goes on, though, you still have a, a weapon power Idris too, which I know you talk about ever so often. Actually, I'm not entirely sure but in this situation do you think Idris is going to be able to function if you get uh, a rush onto Iraqi Zoro either land ordained or or try and get a route on him that's going to be pretty easy picking some weapon, weapon power Idris you'd have to feel you have to feel but with the jump jets the ability to escape the ordained it, 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 that's your CC gone you, you need Sloan Delphi being able to get on top of the um, the Baron so it kind of feels like Truth is going to be on his own here to really one v one Araki Zoro. Usually, you you have to have hard CC um, to to be able to force Araki Zoro into a bad position. Um, it, it just kind of feels like maybe Truth can force a, a jump jets, and then Starboy is able to put the ordained on. But you know, Batiste is not as good in the captain position for for one reason alone. His ordained range is, is pretty low. It did get buffed a little bit, at Scoundrel, but it, it's not high enough that you're uh, constantly in range for the Ordains, which means that yeah. the, it's it's super difficult to actually lock down the, uh, the, the the Baron. One of the other thing that is important to note is how good Lyra is at shutting down traditional mobility, which when I say traditional mobility, I mean literally running at them fast. <laughs> Lyra is pretty good at shutting that down with Bright Bulwark specifically. Uh, obviously great at stopping those gap closing abilities too, but also pretty good at stopping people who just run very quickly at you because you get that team-wide slow and especially post-war treads, that'll be pretty crucial to trying to keep Iraqi Zoro healthy and alive in a lot of these team fights. And also, something that we haven't touched on, how good Grumpture Ultimate is against Rhyme in general. If yeah. you can just Grumpture Ultimate Rhyme and you take him out of the fight regardless, like, then you don't have to worry about Rhyme for a good few seconds. And, and then one of the really good ways to deal with the Rhyme, especially in team fights, is isolating him. So either putting him in the Grumpture Ultimate and then bringing him to a situation where the team can't really back him up. Another good way of dealing with the Rhyme in a team fight situation for Gangstars. Yeah, certainly is. And we actually see Xenotech going towards this uh, on point, on hit uh, effect build once more. This tension bow aftershock coming out, uh, you would think, on the, uh, the Grumpjaw here. Uh, it's. Very strong, obviously, into it. He may even go Stormcrown 
I have to see. He's diving on in. Good old Dane, though, gonna shut down that stuffed immediately. That is the one thing that Nova can certainly do, is shut down Xenotex engaged with a well time ordained. And Truth, going to land a lot of damage onto Araki Zoro, but everyone on Nova's pretty low here. They have a fountain available, as does Veins, and of course, as a Lyra, he can heal. You'd have to think the Gangstars are pretty happy sticking around to defend the turret. I'm wondering, I don't know, but Xenotech held on to his ultimate there. I know he must have used it easy recently, it's on cooldown. And she tries to go in onto Lone Delphi. Yeah, it's uh, Lone Delphi on a rhyme, he doesn't care. It was a, an ordained actually stopped the, uh, the uh, stuff there, right. etc. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense because I was wondering where he'd used it. I was thinking he could use it on the rhyme when the rhyme was isolated and then drag him back towards the turret. But yeah, I think the ordained shut him down. I think it's also why you're seeing Xenotech rush what seems to be a reflex block very early on here, especially post six. It's gonna be so important that he reflex blocks out of those ordains, one of the only ways that really shuts down his ultimate so, so easily. Um, and I think you can see that from Xenotech. Very, very important for him there. And you can see he's already picked it up, now going towards the Aftershock. Yeah, fantastic item there. Use it as soon as he dives on in. Gangstar's very happy to kind of allow the pace to be set um, by the side of Nova. They don't need to rush for team fights. They don't need to rush for objectives. But if they do find Lone Delphi all by himself, then perhaps they can look for fights. They want Araki Zoro to scale up. They want Xenotech to complete his very gold-efficient build. Another fight breaking out, Xenotech is in the middle of this ordained. That's a huge route onto Araki Zoro. He's going very low. He gets the fountain, but it's not enough. And it's going to be Lone Delphi finding the kill. Now he can sustain. Another one goes over to Truth and Xenotech's on the run. Starboy with the ordained coming up. He pops it down. The route goes out. Xenotech gets stunned. Can they find the kill? Starboy, can he find it? Truth throws out the Chakram. Hits once, but not twice. And it will be Starboy finding the third. But they did delay the ace, which might mean they're able to get back and defend this turret. It'll be very close. No, I don't think it's going to be able to be defended. Raki Zoro probably going to be there just a little bit too late to allow that to happen. And the first turret of the game goes over to Nova. Iraki Zoro used the jump jets. He might be dead. Yeah, he might be. He gets rooted on down. He gets blown on up. Cannot afford mispositioning like that against this composition from Nova. It only feeds into their win conditions. Veins throwing out these auto attacks. They're looking for Starboy here. Xenotech does so much damage, but Lone Delphi is very, very tanky and very happy to take these long brawls out. Xenotech realizes his mistake. Truth gets a heal. Gonna throw out that Chakram, and Veins able to dodge it. Has that portal and will go home. Gangstars are actually on the back end. We haven't really talked about it, but it is a three and a half gold advantage currently to Nova. Yeah, I mean, they've actually managed to generate a massive mid-game lead here, Nova, against Gangstars, a team that was predicted to kind of walk over them. Nova have got some incredibly good players on their side. Truth was heralded as one of the best players of the VIS in the previous season, I believe. Starboy and Lone Delphi, I mean, I know Fuji used to talk about Lone Delphi as kind of a prodigy in the jungle. This is a team made up of incredibly skilled players who haven't yet found a platform to succeed with. Looks like they've brought up this kind of unique composition. I love the, the combo between the Ordained and Rhyme. I think it was the one way that you could make the Rhyme work into this particular composition. What I do want to see from Veins, though, a little bit more defensive. He needs to be there for Iraqi Zoro to be able to use those Bright Bulwarks. I definitely think Iraqi Zoro has to save those Jump Jets defensively. Every time we've seen Gangstars lose in a fight, Iraqi Zoro has been using those Jump Jets to get offensively into position. Don't think that's the way, realistically, that Gangstars win these fights. You should be peeling, you should be trying to disengage, and you should be getting Iraqi Zoro to the late game so that then he can use those really defensive... Um... Oh wait, we've got a fight. Yeah, Veins get stunned here. Lone Delphi's trying to get into position. Vayne's not really the main target. Xenotech can look to go forward. Worth noting, this jump jet has been uh, overdriven. So he now is able to escape the CC lock. Oh, stuff doesn't quite connect from Xenotech. That's a lot of damage coming out of Truth and his Chakram. Almost completed his full damage build. In fact, almost has the goal to finish it as well. Now we're gonna push forward. Vayne's in a lot of trouble. Does almost lose his life, but is able to escape. If only a Shimmer Strike came out, that would have been a dead Vayne's would have had to have popped his fountain if he wanted to survive there. Xenotech's looking for an engage here. Nova looking pretty confident to just walk away from this one. Truth has a lot of gold in his pocket and uh, I think he's going to want to try and spend it after they get this gold miner. Yeah, Lone Delphi also been kind of restricting income for Xenotech who has yet to finish his Aftershock. A very early game focus build. Oh, it's on Ion Nova. Cannon it steals the, steal it. Steals the crystal miner. Gold miner goes down. 
You should never lose a gold miner when you have a, sh a, a chakra on your dress. That is just Nova underestimating the power of Iron Cannon there. I actually think they got distracted as a team as Xenotech and Veins were making aggressive moves. They just kind of forgot that Ion Cannon, even though this is a weapon power Baron, Ion Cannon does do quite a bit of damage. So I think they just kind of underestimated the Ion Cannon there. A little bit lackluster, and it is a free steal for Gangstars, giving them a much needed gold injection as they move towards a third weapon power item on Iraqi Zoro here, now working towards what either could be a Tornado Trigger or another Tyrant's Monocle. We're at a very interesting point in the game, Excoundrel, because yeah. I don't think either of us expected this composition from Nova to work. Not really. Realistically. Uh, but it is. And, and, you know, full credit to Nova. They are making this work. The question is how long for? Because Iraqi Zoro does scale up huge, and Xenotech is going to continue to be a bit of a threat on this Grump Jaw. I, I, I wonder if there's a, a, talk, a clock ticking over the heads of Nova, whether or not their composition gets stronger in the late game as the fights become a little bit more chaotic, a little bit more all in, or if it becomes weaker. Because currently, uh, it, it, it's I'm struggling to see if they, they win this game, if they, they, they delay it. And, and currently, they're not really pushing the pushing the ticket out enough to be forcing uh, the, the gold lead that they have. The one thing I'm worried about for um, Nova specifically is everyone's still on tier one boots, apart from Idris, who's on tier two. In a, in a composition that really relies on having good mobility to get your high hit, you know, heavy hitting rhyme into the back line to deal with Iraqi Zoro, especially now Iraqi Zoro has overdriven those jumpers. Oh, they've got another fight breaking out here. Xenotech swallowed up Starboy. He's going to walk straight into a lot of damage, and that's him dead and done for. The turret goes down. It's going to be Truth looking for a kill into Xenotech, but the fountain will happily keep him alive. Truth uses that shroud step to escape they're going to target down the Idris. good reflex block keeps him alive, him alive and he is just going to walk away on a sliver of hp and this is the problem like as soon as you put on the back foot here you don't really have oh, any might recovery die. Okay, no <laughs> you don't really have any recovery mechanisms for nova you know as soon as that happens you don't really have any way of putting pressure onto raki zoro wait a second <laughs> Truth nope. just walked in and got destroyed. Lone Delphi doing a lot of work to Iraqi. Oh, can't quite find the kill Ooh. though. He's trying to get in there, but Xenotech nom nom noms him. Gonna spit him out immediately. He says no. Fearsome Shape flies out. Fears too. Iraqi though just gonna start laying into Lone Delphi, and that's gonna be another kill going over to the Baron here. Starboy, there's no escape for this. Batiste, it's a double for Iraqi Zoro. And perhaps that ticking clock has finally blown up. Well, he's got 2,500 gold now. He's going to be able to finish his four item build and pick up a bit of defense to boot. One of the best ways to deal with the rhyme, and I think there's a, 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 we really exemplified it this one ranked game I think me and Dowsey played a while back. You basically kite in and out of him. You basically say, okay, someone take a little bit of damage from Rhyme while we then do some damage from afar. Then someone jumps out, someone jumps in. You basically keep Rhyme moving all the time because if you can keep him in, if he keeps in one space, he's able to then get basic attacks, build up fortified health, get loads of regeneration from Eve of Harvest. The way that you deal with the Rhyme is keep him moving, force him to have some extra mobility to make the plays. And right now, Rhyme had used his boots, he'd used those sprints. Iraqi Zoro was then able to jump out as he was being focused, gets a couple of basic attacks in, suddenly Xenotech becomes the focus, and then Iraqi Zoro then forces Rhyme to come back towards him. It was a really good way of dealing with it, and they seem to have found the ticket now, especially as Iraqi Zoro picks up that tornado trigger as his fourth item. True, diving forward, he's on top of Iraqi here, but he's getting blown up, he just can't stand the damage, and Iraqi will take his life. It's Starboy and Lone Delphi now to fight the fight, yeah, but Lone yeah. Delphi just gets destroyed. Where is the defensives on the side? Yes, they have Atlas, but what does Atlas do against a, ba a Baron? Almost nothing, it's not effective, and I, I have to question Starboy's intentions here. You mentioned already the boots problem for the side of Nova. He's gone down an Echo route here, so he can have a double Fearsome Shade or a double Ordained, and I just don't feel like it works into the win conditions of Nova. Without the mobility to back it up, you're just going to be forcing Gangstars even further away from you, right? And that's not kind of what you want. You, you do want Gangstars to be close to you because that's where Rhyme is going to function. I think Nova got so far ahead, they felt that they could prioritize their offensive capabilities. You saw Rhyme go a broken myth before even getting tier... I mean, he's still not got tier 2 boots. That's... I, 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 look, I hold my hand up. I'm not the best Rhyme player in the world. But what, one thing I do know about Rhyme is... Journey boots are just such a good item for him, because especially against the ranged composition. 
I think they neglected the mobility needed to make this composition work because they were doing so well in the early game. Now we've got to the late game, they can't actually keep up with the pace of gangsters because they don't really have the mobility to do it. They need mobility, they need to get in there, and they can't. Gangstars are learning and kiting and walking away. Nova, they've taken control of this middle area for now. Gangstars are going to start pushing the wave back towards their base as Nova advance towards Gangstars here. They want to engage, get on top of the side of Gangstars and try and blow up this Baron, but they haven't had the chances to yet. Seriously, three Atlas Pauldrons, perhaps it's to focus down the Xenotech. They're starting up the Kraken here, trying to bait Gangstars into a fight. Well, Dane goes down onto a Xenotech, he happily just walks out of it. Nova, they've got the fight they want. Do they want that? No, look at that damage. Oh no, they've swallowed up the Rhyme. Xenotech's gonna spit him out, and that's gonna be Lone Delphi going down to an auto attack. Here comes Araki Zoro looking for Starboy, and Starboy's in a lot of trouble. Xenotech sets him up. Good fearsome shade will save his life. Truth, already poured it back. Didn't want any of it. Scoundrel. That was case in point right there about how good the ultimate of Grumpjaw is against Rhyme. Isolate a Rhyme away from his carries, the ability for you to then dive and dance around him. He becomes mincemeat against the double range composition. Easy crack and take for Gangstars right now. They're going to just lavish this and they're going to put pressure now onto Starboy once more. Starboy and Troop are dead. I don't see a way they escape. That's the Shroud step. Yeah, it dodges out a lovely use of the stuffed, but oh no, never mind. Troop done it. He went on and done it. He blew up the Baron. I don't know how, but he's done it, Excoundrel. Now they can look to prevent the losses here with the Kraken. It's going to hit this second turret, but without the Baron to push, Gangstars are not going to even attempt. No, I think this might get one turret, this Kraken here. As soon as Nova comes, uh, Truth comes back, this should be starting to chunk down pretty quickly. I just think, personally, see, this uh, Iraqi Zoro kind of, again, made the same mistake that, I don't know, this might not even get one turret. This will just literally be a free Kraken gold over to Nova. Um, one of the major mistakes I, I saw there was Iraqi Zoro overestimating his own damage and also kind of disrespecting getting into melee range versus Truth, who on this weapon power Idris will just chunk him if he gets into that kind of range. Uh, again, I, the way that we've been seeing Gangstars win these fights is by Iraqi Zoro using defensive jump jets to get himself into a good position, far enough away from this double melee threat to really function heavily as that ranged weapon power carry. He, in that situation, he jumped in, looking to blow up Truth, who is sitting on an Atlas Pauldrons right now. You're not going to kill him in two hits. I mean, you might, might take three. But, you know, those double hits in the, the jump jets aren't going to get a singular kill this time round. And Iraqi Zoro kind of overestimating his damage there. Yeah, it's going to be Truth diving in. Araki Zoro, though, able to jump out of that Ordain. Fearsome Shade comes through, does knock Veins back. Can Araki survive? Jumps again. The Truth has him on his heart sides, and that will be a kill going over. They're starting to win the fights here. They're isolating Veins, the secret to blowing up a Baron. Remove his healing, and Veins has been struggling. Gets caught in a Fearsome Shade, now trying to survive. The Ordain stuns him, but they're not chasing up. Truth going to go in. Truth should be able to secure this with the Chakram. That is huge. You know, I often find Excoundrel when you can't kill the Baron, you can't kill the, the person who is, you know, dealing the most damage. You just start turning towards the Captain instead. Nova, they've put pressure onto Veins here and it's opened up Araki Zoro to death. Now, what I really liked, actually, is there was that now Starboy has got the War Treads as they push onto this choke point turret. Starboy had the War Treads. They rushed in, they put an ordain onto Iraqi that forced him to make a very defensive um, jump jet, which was good. But then Lone Delphi, who's now got tier two boots, popped those boots to chase Iraqi Zoro down. It's the mobility needed to pressure the Baron after he's used those jump jets, which was so important there. War treads finally making a difference here, like you know we thought it would. And by forcing Iraqi Zoro to make that kind of jump jets early by just getting out of the ordain because he doesn't have reflex block because he's gone to a um, because he's gone to a, a metal jacket, he then doesn't have the ability to lock down the route from Lone Delphi. So there's two ways now of locking up this Baron, and, and the stuttering of that from Nova is just so good in these team fights. He's Lone Delphi got four treads, by the way. Yeah, I, I, I like this extra health, extra team mobility. When you need to get into the team fight. 
Uh, having the Idris lead the charge, not a bad shout. No Delphi has gone towards extra armor. He's not going a third offensive item. They've separated veins. They could look to blow him up. That's the second fearsome shade, knocking Xenotech back. But Nova don't want a hard commit to the fight. And now they're going to get engaged upon. Oh no, they've dived onto Xenotech, as the, uh, onto Iraqi, as the rest of his team dives away. Iraqi able to escape, turning now all their attention to Xenotech and veins here, doing a lot of damage. And veins very low. The Shakram rips through, finds the kill. Lone Delphi charging, Araki is dead, Xenotech is dead, Nova have done it, they found an ace here in Scoundrel with 40 seconds on the clock, they're looking for their first game win here in the VG8. And do you know what won that team fight for them, Dalsy? Starboy's War Treads. That basically ran them right through onto Iraqi Zoro, forced him into an uncomfortable position because they had the uh, sort of the ability to follow up Iraqi after using his jump jets. Iraqi is gone for the metal jacket. In this situation, especially once War Treads came out, it might have been better to even have that reflex block on board and the Aegis, but I guess he was so threatened by the weapon power Idris, he felt that he needed those uh, that... um. The, the metal jacket there, but man, Nova bringing it back in this series. We're going all the way to game three. Certainly are, Scoundrel. Huge mistake made there by Nova at the end, uh, by Gangstars at the end. Left Xenotech by themselves. Vayne, Araki Zoro dived forward and it allowed Lone Delphi and Troop to just charge straight onto the Baron, yeah. opening him up and they just tanked Araki down to the no point of return. Incredible gameplay from Nova, a very unusual composition, but they've taken the game and now it's over to game three. Let's break it down further with Joe and the analysts. Nova have only gone and done it. They've got a win on the board, ladies and gentlemen. Coming back after, honestly, a very bad start to the game. It felt done and dusted. It felt like Gangstars were just going to run away with it. Well, it, was, it was actually, it was a good start to the game for Nova and then a really bad mid game. And then a very good late game. So uh, they managed to come back from, again, it did look like gangsters were just going to be able to take this 2-0. But yeah. eventually they were able to keep the Idris alive long enough that Rhyme was able to go to town on Iraqi Zoro and Xenotech. Yeah. I mean, let's start by looking at the early game, like how, how this all got set up, because it was a little bit back and forth, then the gangsters seemed to just run away with things. Yeah, we saw that Rhyme did really well into his composition, and when they were focusing Delphi, Rhyme, the fortified health, when Baron does, doesn't get online yet with all the tier 3 items, they actually lost those key fights. And then you can see when they couldn't get onto the Baron in the mid game, that's when they start winning the fights. Gangstars won a lot of fights. And this is a beautiful eat by Xeno. Made a play underneath their turret there and won that fight. And then from there, it kind of went the direction of Gangstars because Nova just couldn't get onto the Baron. And what changed in the late game is they got double war treads. They were able to double war treads with a double fear. Were able to do a lot of work to get onto the Baron and root him uh, under Rhyme. One thing I did, did not like about Nova is triple Atlas Pauldron. I felt like Idris definitely needed a metal jacket. Um, while the other two had Atlas Pauldrons. And because Atlas only reduces damage by like 46%, and with the Tension Bow Baron, that, that it, a lot of damage will pass through. You saw Truth just get melted when he got hit by like three rockets. Yeah, and I mean, like, that, that was the story of a lot of the game, was just a bunch of rockets come out from Zoro, just blow somebody up, and that's the team fight already won. Yeah. And then it was just Nova, like, scampering away, trying to survive the fight. But then we got to the late game, and it was like, suddenly... It was like Gangstars suddenly weren't able to protect the Baron anymore. They just seemed to lose that that coordination and that synergy that they had going for the vast majority of the game. And a lot of it was it, it was a little bit of not being able to protect the Baron any longer, but it was also not being able to blow up the Idris in an instant any longer. Uh, I think Truth down the stretch did a really good job of using his ultimate to get himself out of a fight once he got low and then rejoining it once he could jump back in and be a little bit healthier after the Baron used those jump jets. So uh, the, the heads up awareness by Nova in the late game is really what ended up saving them and turning this game around. Yeah, and I want to have a look at the late game now and like actually analyze some of these fights a little bit closer because these fights were absolutely crazy. Yeah, for sure. This is where, you know, Truth just got melted. As you see, the Atlas Pauldron doesn't give him that much damage. And if they cannot get onto the, the nice dodge there by Iraqi, too. He dodged the Rhyme Ultimate. It was a beautiful play by Gangstars there. And you can see, if they couldn't lock down Baron, they won almost every fight. That was a nice block, a late block by Vayne's actually, on the Fear. But here, you can see that Baron does get deleted, and they win this fight because Baron is knocked out. And that, that was pretty much the fight 
after every single game. You can see they're yeah. they got banned right there because of the double war trades, the fear, etc. And again, it's when the Idris is not blown up. In that fight around Crack and the one right before this, it was actually the stuffed ended up eating the Idris and took him out of the fight so that he couldn't be killed. That forced Iraqi Zoro to then have to, when he used his jump jets, had to target the Rhyme. They were no longer available yeah. to hit the Idris. Idris was able to rejoin that fight. So uh, a, a little bit of a mistake there from Gangstars and eating the Idris instead of blowing him up. But it's still just great play from Nova. And also, like one of the big changes in the fight, something someone mentioned earlier, was the fact that the focus kind of shifted onto Lyra for the side of Nova. They started mm -hmm. to blow up the healer, and then suddenly you don't have this unlimited health baron anymore. There's no, it's not low, it's no longer as tanky. It's actually easier to deal with. And so long as they could withstand the damage they were taking while they finished Lyra, then they would be able to finish the job. And that, you know, we saw Lone Delphi kind of charging at, at the Baron just to keep him at bay while they finished off the Lyra. Fantastic stuff though from Nova. I'm very excited to see them get on, on the board, especially in a series that on paper is so one-sided. Yeah, and I feel like Gangstars is o is overconfident on draft. They really need to draft properly because every time they miss the draft, they end up losing or struggling in the games. Because mm -hmm. again, Idris counters Baron, Melee counters him, right? Rhyme counters Grumpjaw. They pick those two, they pick Baron into Idris when they just use an Idris to beat Truth's Baron. <laughs> So I felt like the draft, they're either overconfident or not really thinking through the draft, and they need to stop making these mistakes because every time I see Gangstars mess up the draft like that, they lose these games. Easy. So this is kind of like a... That draft was like a wake-up call for Gangstars at this stage. They, they need to kind of take a step back, like kind of wind it in a little bit and be like, okay, let's get level-headed again. Let's kind of refresh and hopefully for them have a similar performance in the draft to what they had in game one of the, ste yep. of the series. And you know, be able to turn this into a victory because, you know, like f right now for Nova, they have nothing to lose, right? Every win is a point for them. Getting into the semifinals is great. A lot of respect will be earned for them if they can take it. For Gangstars, there's a lot on the line right now. This is not a team that you can comfortably lose to without taking a little bit of a hit to your reputation. But here we go, draft underway. Grace and Grumpjaw going to be taken away, which means Baron is still available. That's been a heavy priority in this series. Yeah, I think they may switch it up here. Instead of first picking Baron, they may pick maybe Kestrel here potentially and put that onto Truth or Delphi with because the, they can flex Crystal or Weapon Kestrel. So Nova may switch thing Arminate. They even take Lyra and, and get a healer because Grace is banned and that makes Lyra a very good composition because if they take Lyra and Baron is open, Lyra is good into Baron. Uh, because of the heals and the portal and bulwark that kind of disables his jump ability. So let's see what Nova decides. So I think they're going to switch it up because last time they first picked the Baron here and I think they're going to change things up. Well, they're going to change it up in an even bigger way. Yeah. Going for this Batiste right off the bat. Uh, again, maybe going to be a Captain Batiste after they just pulled that out. So it's a great flex pick. You don't really know if you're Gangstars where that's going to end up. Uh, and be because they just won with it. Otherwise, you'd say, okay, it's going to be the jungle, but uh, not necessarily the case with Nova. So, Gangsters, I'm curious if they're going to go for this Baron, even though they just lost with it. Uh, I feel like it's still a pick that they can very much make work, but they're going to decide to play it safer a bit here and take the Vox. And this is one of the first Vox picks we've seen in a few games, to be honest. It started to take a little bit of a back seat today, which, you know, I mean, Vox is definitely a very strong pick. It's a little bit surprising that it has been less priority. Yeah, today. they need to ban Baron here. Yeah, because giving Baron and Batiste over is very deadly into a Vox. So that's a very smart ban by Gangstars. I like, so far, I like how they're drafting. They're going to ban a Black Feather, which makes sense because Xeno attack on Black Feather is good. And also, it's good against a Batiste composition, usually. So now they can take. Now they can take the Lyra here. Lyra is going to be a really good pick because Poison Shiv, along with the healer, is very strong uh, with Fox here. So I'm pretty sure they're going to secure Lyra unless they want to surprise us and maybe take Samuel. Um, but I think Lyra is going to be secured here for sure. Yeah, I think part of it as well. There's no more bans. So Samuel's a fairly safe bet that it'll make it through the draft yep. with the Batiste being picked up so early on. However, Batiste definitely could still go over towards Starboy. That's what we saw last game. So it's not a guaranteed jungle, but the Lyra does come through in the end for Gangstars. So very solid two picks for Gangstars so far. This definitely feels like a safer draft. Yeah, now there's Grumpjaw open. However, if they pick Grumpjaw, Gangstars can play Rhyme into that. So that's why I like the Lyra pick here. It made a lot of sense. So Nova does have that Grumpjaw open. Baron is also open, so they could play Baron into Lyra, but that's kind of risky, honestly. 
um, and Iraqi and Gangstars knows they know how to counter a Baron. So they may end up with maybe a Weapon Kestrel, because Weapon Kestrel can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Vox, and it's really more of a skill matchup. The Kestrel can, but I don't think the Baron is that much of a risk just because there is a Vox. You know it's not going to be an Idris in the lane against you. You know that you're not going to have... I mean, you know, I will say Baron is banned, so... Oh, he is banned, <laughs> Let's sorry. just move on from the So Kestrel, there we go. Yeah, yeah I, was just trusting, like I was just it's trusting CJ. Yeah, that's, that's I mean, all that was. <laughs> it has been a long day, but yeah, I, I figured since you're both analyzing that, we'll, we'll move the conversation on. Kestrel and, is going to be the lock-in. And then Samuel, I think. Because Samuel with the Fearsome Shade, Fearsome Shade them and then Sleep them. Oh my god, that's a deadly composition. And Delphi is really good on Samuel, but that's going to give Grumpjaw to Gangstars. But CP Grumpjaw, like I said, is not good as you saw last game. Mm -hmm. So they're going to pick Samuel here. If Gangstars pick CP Grumpjaw, they're going to lose. And they need to pick something else that works better for them because uh, again I don't I don't really like CP comp drop because it, it's outscaled by both uh, Samuel and Batiste. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely agree. I think a, a Glaive would actually be a really strong pick for Gangstars right here. Or Knocking Kashka. Glaive or Kashka. I, I have a tendency to lean towards the Glaive uh, because I just I really like Glaive into Samuel. Uh, I feel like just being able to flat out knock him out of his Drifting Dark is a really strong tool, and also knocking someone into a Bright Bulwark is very strong as yeah, well. Yeah, I think if they want to win draft, they can just pick Celeste here, uh, because the, she outranges the entire team, and if she keeps her position, she can't get uh, ordained. But they're going to go ahead with Kashuk here. So this is a little risky, but also could work as long as she wins the early game. Batiste is going to be able to shut down her, her uh, mobility, but Lara Kasha is actually really strong in early game, so I like the draft from Gangster so far. All right, well, that is going to be the drafts rounded out right now, and we're definitely starting to see this meta really be tested now. We're starting to see teams really learn how to counter some of these picks, and we're starting to see these power picks not make it through draft, not because they're banned, but because they know that their opponents are going to be able to counter them. What are our thoughts then looking at this draft? How are we feeling going into the third and final game? I'm still feeling Gangstars on this one. I feel like they have a little bit of an edge just in the, the damage output that they're going to be able to do early on. As long as they can just avoid getting stuck in active camo traps and deal with the Batiste, the amount of crowd control that's going to come out from there, that's going to be their biggest difficulty and it's going to be the key to victory for the side of Nova. All right, sweet Jay? I really like Xenotech and um, I really like Xenotech on... <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, yeah, he's a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> on the Kashka. But it's going to come down to, can Vayne's block the Fearsome Shade late game? Because yep. if he cannot block that, they're going to be in big trouble and they're going to get aced in the late game. So I do like Gangstar's composition, though, and I think Gangstar's will take it. All right, so two for Gangstar's here on the desk. Who are you guys at home supporting? That's what we want to know. Hashtag Vainglory8 to get in touch and let us know what's going on with your Vainglory8 experience. But with that, it's time to head on into this game. Final game of the day between Nova and Gangstar. You know what, Sweet Jay? I also like Xenotech. Absolutely lovely guy, great in person, great to talk to, but becomes an absolute monster when you put him on a carry hero. Let me not understate this, Egg Scoundrel. Put Xenotech on a hero he can carry, and carry he will. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think Xenotech has proven time and time again that he is perfectly capable of putting in huge shifts on these carry heroes in Vainglory. But they do have Starboy on Batiste, which is classically considered one of the early... So when Batiste was originally coming into the meta, he was specifically picked into Koshka. I think Gabe was the first person to pilot this in a professional match. They picked the um, Batiste captain, used the Ordain to shut down Koshka, who relies on her mobility to be super aggressive in the early game. So having Batiste there just past level two was a really way, good way to shut down Koshka's aggression because she wasn't able to just get that massive movement speed and sort of run amok in the midst of these jungle fights. Uh, this is classically one of the picks that shut her down. So I'm interested to see. I think Batiste is very good against um, Koshka. I also think if you can get Batiste onto the Vox, great way to shut down his mobility as well. This could be a big pick for Nova. Very interesting backs here from the side of Gangstars wanting to keep up their shopping and try and stay ahead of the curb here. Troop also gone back going, this uh, minion wave just going to sit tight, close to the turret. Boots also popped to get back into lane quickly. So Gangstars, you know, trying to match the tempo Nova's putting out here. Be very interested to see how much this Batiste is able to shut down the Koshka, as you mentioned, obviously at the uh, London Unified Western Live Championship. That's where we saw it. And it was a big shutdown to Von C's Koshka of all Koshkas as well. So, you know, typically the person who is known for playing Koshka, the best in North America, shut it down with a Batiste. 
I'm going to be putting on this uh, Elder Trio. I don't know if that got stolen. No, Ruth did end up getting that. It's going to be this weapon power Kestrel that we've seen kind of... I think we've seen this piloted quite a lot over the recent months, or over the recent weeks even. Uh, especially that build again that's focused on the Glimmer Shot. Starboy, maybe. I think he's okay. Just should he be is. able to walk away. Great active camo stun will ensure it. Gangstars, though, are putting on the pressure. Currently, Lone Delphi at his backs. Farming it on up, and Gangstars with a very aggressive rotation to steal away a camp. Was spotted out by a Scout Trap, which will keep Lone Delphi safe. But you have to wonder uh, how this Koshka pick can, can really shut down the Samuel. You'd think it would shut it down a great ton. Perhaps uh, perhaps that's what Gangstars need to do earlier rather than later. Putting pressure on Jazina Tech here. I, I think, personally for me, you know, if you let Lone Delphi get away with the early jungle, especially versus a Koshka, he's going to be getting towards that frost burn. That's another way to reduce mobility of Koshka. Xenotech does need to get to level six, I think, and then you can start to say, again, like you said, with we saw with Von C on Koshka, just pull that trigger when you know that there aren't reflex blocks there available to use, and then just try and capitalize off the back of that. I think that's where we should start looking to see Gangstars sort of push their advantage, because right now, Xenotech has not yet got a huge advantage from the jungle, hasn't yet turned the heat up and put pressure onto Lone Delphi on this Samuel. Especially since Star Starboy has been there or thereabouts ready to sort of leap on and put the pressure down with that ordained. Although they will take away the forward tree and so finally some aggression from this duo of Veins and Xeno taking the jungle. Yeah, and in the lane, Truth having a pretty good time farming up at the moment. Araki Zoro is pushed under the turret, makes things slightly difficult though, seemingly capable, uh, capable of, you know, lasting these creeps. There won't be too much loss for him. Gangstar is very close to hitting this level 6 on Xenotech, and Truth hasn't gone back and completed a uh, reflex block yet, so you have to wonder if he's going to be relying heavily on Starboy to, to stop a Yummy Captain Frenzy, or if it will be a reflex block purchased up at this uh, at this shop venture now. Either way, very close to hitting Sora Blade, and I'm sure that's what Truth really wants to be completing. In fact, picks it up just now. Just got it now. He's going to work towards what's going to likely be a tension bow after that. I mean, there are several ways you can build weapon power Kestrel. You can go Sora Blade into a traditional weapon power carry build with a bit more attack speed in there, maybe a poison shiv or a breaking point, or you just go for what has been the more popular variant over the last few weeks, which has been the tension bow Sora Blade Tyrant's monocle, uh, and then either like one or oh, wait a second, Xenotech. Xenotech trying to get on top of. Side of Nova here. Starboy goes a little bit low, but Xenotech not quite able to find enough damage yet. I think he just wants to hit level six. A couple camps and he gets it. Yeah. I and mean, that would be a big, big uh, sort of item spike and level spike for him because he can then just sort of turn on the heat. No reflex blocks available yet for any of the Nova lineup. This is where you just need to say, okay, well, it's time for us to go. Time for us to just jump on a target and put pressure on them. Because if you let them build up their reflex blocks, if you let them have them, I mean, Lone Delphi's now got one. I don't know if he had that before, but he has to pick that up. So, you know, reflex block for truth as well. I mean, they, they obviously know how to play against uh, Akoshka or Xenotech. Doesn't quite get the ability to put pressure on. Oh, he gets stunned on the turret. That's him dead. That's first blood whoa, going whoa, over. What? And Lone Delphi able to take it. Steps into the ordained. You get stunned. It does damage. And under a turret, you can't survive. And he couldn't use the ultimate because I believe if you ultimate out of the ordained, you might just get stunned. I don't know if it's yeah. crossing the, the border, but I'm pretty sure it does. So that's a huge, huge. Um, massive loss for Xenotech, who hasn't yet got any early jungle pressure on this Koshka, hasn't been able to snowball from that early game, hasn't put pressure on to Samuel in the enemy jungle. Lone Delphi has been farming and leveling at the same speed, you feel, as Xenotech, even though there is a very small CS difference between the two of them. And, like we said, double reflex block picked up for both Truth and Delphi at this point in time. Dalsy, that's pretty huge, because suddenly Koshka's efficiency and effectiveness has dropped through the floor. Not only that, it was Lone Delphi who picked up the kill. The person that you want to put the pressure on to the most as this Koshka just picked up a kill on top of you when you were supposed to be starting to cook up some heat. Have to wonder how this sways the, the sides here for Gangstars. They have to make sure that they, you know, don't find themselves tilting. And one shot's going to come out very premature considering there was a, you know, uh, gold a flare on top of the gold miner there. But it will be Gangstars securing themselves a 200 gold payout there. So nice little bit of gold for themselves. I mean, they needed a small win because so far they have taken nothing from this game. One of the outs that they do have is Iraqi Zoro getting to the late game. He is going towards... Oh, that's huge damage. Xenotech wants more. 
Almost blown up there. Starboy, if he only put down that ordain, it could have been a kill coming through the side of Nova. This is completely the opposite of how I expected the early game to go. Yeah, and the one thing that Gangstars do have in the late game, though, is they do have a pretty good rushdown composition if you get that breaking point in Iraqi Zoro as his final weapon power item. My only qualm with going the Tension Bow is it does kind of limit the ability to stack breaking point as Vox. And one of the greatest strengths of Vox is his ability to stack breaking point and dive in with Sonic Zoom, just dealing huge amounts of damage. The Tension Bow build means that you stack, stack slightly slower on average compared to... Uh, breaking up uh, compared to the Sorrow Blade build instead. What you would do with Tension Bow, the idea behind it is to get a huge amount of burst very early on, and then you capitalize on that. What I do like about Tension Bow, I'm going to go on the flip side here, Dowsy, is that it does work nicely with a Koshka, because you're both about burst damage. So you're going to bring the Tension Bow from Vox, who is traditionally going to scale up later, and now he's going to have the Tension Bow, which br brings a bit of burst damage to Vox, who doesn't really have burst damage. Combine that with the Koshka, who's got a lot of burst damage, who I'd like to potentially see go either Broken Myth or um, Shattered Glass, probably Broken Myth. And then you have two squishy targets that you can focus in the form of Samuel and Kestrel. So this is somewhere where you could potentially look to exploit, having the fact that you've got a little bit of burst in your side now. This is definitely a build that we've seen popularized over in Europe a lot and in North America as well. They tend to like to run it on Vox, this Tension Bow, Breaking Point, Poison Ship. Obviously a lot of attack speed, you know, the Tension Bow on your first and eighth auto attack definitely does a lot of damage. Have to see though, Bane's going to be going in, taking a chunk, Ordain traps him. Nova really want to fight, they don't have energy on Truth. That could be a reason to, uh, to fall back, give him that Healing, he's gonna start regening. Iraqi wants to go in Xenotech as well. That's a lot of damage onto Xenotech though, as he has to dodge back. Xenotech gets blown up by Truth, and they're looking for more. Iraqi Zoro in the Ordained, and double the Truth. And now they're looking for Veins. Starboy charges forward. Ordained won't be up, but he has those holy, uh, those uh, bad mojos, and he's gonna throw it straight on top of Veins. One more auto attack, it's an ace for Nova. And I mean, Xenotech's positioning, I have no idea what he was doing there basically separated himself from the team by that jungle wall and then essentially then walks back in after taking a whole host of damage dodges the um i think realistically what he was doing was dodging the batiste ultimate but he reflex blocked anyway so he would have dodged that first section of damage and also the section of uh, fear anyway as truth getting a lot of damage onto him raki zoro seems to be running in with these boots yeah raki should be able to secure the kill in fact it'll be xenotech truth as well should die this it overextension, oh, Xenotech actually goes collected. down. The gold miner gets collected by Iraqi Zoro. Bit of chaos there, Excoundrel, just to spice things up, of course. I'm just as I was praising Nova, suddenly Gangstars come back and find their way just back into this game so slightly. Iraqi's going to start to push down this turret. He might have enough damage. Nova's he doing should. a really good job of clearing these minions. The ultimate comes out and that will get the turret destroyed. Suddenly we are back to almost level gold differences between the two. Iraqi Zoro close to working towards that breaking point. I think he can finish it soon. Yeah, he can finish it now. So he's got his three item build now. He is going to be doing a bit more damage as these fights progress and has that coupled burst damage of the Tension Bow. Another reason that we see Tension Bow built now, Darcy, 12% flat pierce. So 12% of your damage will be dealt as true damage despite the armor value that your opponent has. Certainly. And, you know, once you get towards those late game armor you know, points, that's when it becomes really efficient. You know, Tension Bow's gone from being an early game centric item to actually being very, very functionable in the late game. And I think that surprised a lot of people as this meta's kind of shift and the buffs to these items have kind of come across is that Tension Bow is certainly a very viable item as your third pickup on the offensive tree. Let's uh, take stock. It is going to be a breaking, uh, sorry, a broken myth picked up now for Lone Delphi. Pretty huge power spike for the Samuel as he's going to be able to start stacking up. Level 10. Only a couple away from hitting his, you know, full levels as well. And although this game has been rocky for Gangstars, they have maintained a decent amount of pressure. They just need to make sure they don't fall trapped to these, you know, many forms of CC. Vayne's is actually going to dive on in here. The rest of the Gangstars come through. They dodge away the Fearsome Shade. They can look to fight. Xenotech looking for an angle to jump on in. Doesn't quite have it. Gangstars, happy feet, but no kills.
The thing that I really like is that Truth has gone towards the breaking point Kestrel build, a little bit away from what we traditionally see in terms of the straight up Glimmer Shot build. And again, it's one of those situations where you don't want to be statically casting Glimmer Shots all the time as Kestrel in this game. You have the animation that you want to try and avoid using because if you keep yourself in place, it's going to be basically free territory for Xenotech and Iraqi Zoro to dive on you and try and blow you up. So this is a bit more of a traditional weapon power carry build for Truth looking to be a bit more mobile, using that breaking point to supplement the attack speed for the Kestrel. So I like this, because you don't want to stay mobile. The ability for uh, Gangstars to close the gap is very rapid. So if you're there spamming Glimmer shots, even if they're not hitting, it makes you prime target for a Lyra portal or for just Iraqi Zoro to jump in and start dealing damage. So very much like the adaptation here on this Kestrel build. Certainly, and you know, Gangstar is able to sneak away a Crystal Sentry there, taking the first life off the board. Currently Nova, still very confident that they can continue pushing for the win. They just need to buy some vision and some defense items and I think they'll be all right as they uh, spam each other some pings. Some helpful pings, of course, Six Scoundrel. Currently in a good spot though. Truth almost, uh, he's got his three damage items. He's building towards a, a fourth one now. Iraqi's completed his armor. They're gonna try and take this gold miner and I think they should have it unless Vayne's lands a, a very well-timed Imperial Sigil then it, it's going to be a, a lot of gold going over towards Nova. Something else that we haven't touched on is the second item War Treads from Starboy. He prioritized that as a matter of urgency over every other item that he could have chosen. And I think that's because they need that for the kiting potential. You want to be able to run your team away when the engage comes out, either through the portal or through this. Yeah, it's going to be a fight breaking out. Can they get the damage? It's a question. Xenotech feared. Xenotech healed. He stays alive, dives back in, and it's going to be him just dying. But Truth gets sniped. Vayne's finds the auto attack. These fights are so crazy, Scoundrel. Oh, they've got me rocking in my seat. Araki Zoro is going to be fairly healthy. Looks like Gangstars feel comfortable pushing this turret. Yeah, they need to be a bit careful, though. Lone Delphi is a target. The mortal wounds come down. They might dive in here. Araki yeah. Zoro going in. Very simple kill there. Iraqi's already needed to wait for Starboy. In fact, Iraqi's going to be in a bit of trouble here. Dodges the root. Very nice stuff there. Clearly not living in the EU anymore. And that is going to be Gangstars walking out alive. Starboy looks like he's not done right now. Truth can turn up with the active camera, but he is just going to start to clear those waves. And that is that dive, so sort of rush down composition that Gangstars were looking to employ. And actually, I've got to be honest, this, these war trades made a massive difference in the ability for Nova to disengage, find range with the Kestrel, use those um, glimmer shots, you know, and just try and back things up. Again, Iraqi, Xenotech's feeling a little bit, I would say, almost, not want to say useless, but almost useless in these fights because he's just being so easily kited and so easily focused that. He's almost just trying to force out reflex blocks and force out a little bit of damage so that Iraqi Zoro can then follow up and get the majority of the work done. Bit hard for Xenotech here. What's he, he got the aftershock, got the broken myth. So he's stacking up at least in the fights, but it's gonna be Gangstars going in and they've split Nova. This is good stuff for them. Can they get the damage? Truth in a lot of trouble trying to blow up Xenotech. Is able to go in Biz, able to escape, gets a bit of a hill, but Xenotech dives on in and he's gonna find go. himself one. There it is, Xenotech starting to come online as he jumps on top of this Batiste and it's going to be Oblivion putting him to sleep, but it's not enough to save his comrade's life. Lone Delphi finds one in return. Got to look for Iraqi Zoro, breaking uh, Broken Myth up to nine, but it's starting to drop its stacks. Never mind, he's hitting these Malice and Verdicts and he couldn't contest a Samuel who's up to nine stacks and has a Drifting Dark available. You made a really good point there, Dalsy, in the middle of the fight, that the, the, a key way to put pressure on this Nova composition is, is if you can find a flank and you can split them up, because they have power in the ability to group and disengage as a group with those war treads and the Batiste ultimate, another very important tool at pushing back the offensive wave of Gangstars. You know, when, is it, when Xenotech dives in with Veins, you just want to throw out that fearsome shade to try and buy yourself the time to reposition. But by splitting them up, they didn't have good position to do that and Truth was so easily focused down. Xenotech actually found something useful to do in that fight because he was able to just rush down Truth even despite the active camos coming out. So I think that's another really important point. If, if Gangstars can do that and they can split things up, really, really useful for them. I am starting to worry about Iraqi Zoro's damage though. It feels like it's a little bit lackluster in these fights. He needs to stack up to quite a hefty amount of breaking point stacks before he can actually get some serious damage done to the backline. And he's all by himself here. Could get targeted. No, oh, Dane's coming out. They don't want to fight Hinova. Lone Delphi just 
trying to get that broken myth stacked up here. We're at the 17 minute mark at Scoundrel. A fight very crucial to turning the tides of this game. Kraken goes over, turrets start falling, and it's going to be Gangstars looking for a fight onto Nova. It's going to be Lone Delphi separated, Xenotech going to rush on in, and that's going to be him dead. Xenotech able to escape, the Fountain keeps him alive. Truth trying to reposition, trying to find the Glamour shots to shred through the health bars of Gangstars. Has a one shot, won't hit it though, and now it's going to be Gangstars diving back on in. Starboy's dead, it's only Truth left standing, and Truth. Very low on energy, will get himself this Treant. Going to have to make a hero play, I think. Starting to position over towards this Kraken. There's a flare though, stopping him from going into this bush for now. Gonna step into it, the Kraken, very low. Glimmer shot, might be able to tear through it. Has to be well timed, has to be on point. Can he steal you? Oh, oh he so cannot. Close. Oh, he felt like it was timed so perfectly as well, but I do believe Gangstar's blocked the main shot, which is where the he hefty did. damage comes from, from Glimmer Shot. So when you only have Glimmer Shot um, with weapon power, most of the damage comes in the area in the circle when you cast it. The main damage from the Crystal Power build path comes from the area that explodes behind that circle. I think the explosion hit Kraken, which isn't a massive amount of damage to have when you're a weapon power Kestrel, and that meant that it wasn't enough to secure that uh, that Kraken. But it was a good, it was a good attempt. Good attempt. Would have been a story worth telling. Unfortunately for Nova now, it is defense time. Araki though, face tanks are one shot, will get healed up. Not going to be too much of a problem. Look at the way Gangstar's just positioned. Over towards this top side of the Kraken means that Samuel can't deal damage to them and they easily take this turret down. Nova, not really able to do anything against Gangstar's. They will be able to take the Kraken down, stop it from taking any of their Bane Crystal turrets' lives, but it's going to be a number C uh, Crystal Sentry taken down by Gangstar's Crystal here. Sentry and Nova, defeated. they're starting to wear thin. Do you know what's really interesting about Tension Bow? Uh, it, I, it's because I've been looking into this so much recently that I find it really interesting. The more armor you get, the better Tension Bow becomes because of that armor pierce. So the better item Tension Bow becomes the more armor you get. So therefore you would make the, the argument that Tension Bow actually becomes better as the game goes on because people are more likely to build armor, which is kind of against what Tension Bow was there for in the first place. Got a little bit of a fight though. Maybe we can do yeah. this later. Lone Delphi's in a bit of trouble here. Starboy's trying to hold them up. That's a good fear. It does split up Gangstars. Now there's going to be another. It's the Echo. It's coming out. And Veins is dead. It's going to be Nova pushing forward. Araki wants to go into the fight. Xenotech's in the middle of it. He's looking for some kills, but he gets taken down. Araki can't Don't dance kill. quick enough. It's ace. gonna be an ace! A clean ace from Nova! The Seesaw activated and they're on the push. The Echo double disengage makes it so hard for Gangstars to follow up on their initial movements. Veins jumps in, suddenly Fierce and Shade comes down. They have to reset and go from square one. But square one gets reset again with another Fearsome Shade and suddenly Nova push very hard into this Gangstars base. Get two turrets at the back of that fight. And now they can set up the vision for Kraken as well. Massive win for them there. And Starboy MVP. We always we joked about the Echo in the uh, in the games previous, but Echo has worked so well here for Starboy because it was such it's... an impactful way to disengage with that ultimate. It was the order of the Echo, right? He yeah. built it after his War Treads. So this time the Echo is kind of in a great position. It just felt like you needed War Treads in the previous composition, but they won it. Now Nova, they've got a chance to win this game. In fact, they've got a gold lead as well at Scoundrel. So they're in a good position here. Truth fully built up here. Lone Delphi just completing his defense items now. Nova, they have a chance. Just need to wait for that Echo to reset. Nova have got a very hard hitting late game Kestrel as well. Remember, Iraqi Zoro's realistic damage in the late game kind of relies on his ability to build breaking point stacks and be super mobile, which both of these Fearsome Shades, I mean, not only does Fearsome Shade disengage a fight, it also resets Broken Myth stacks and Breaking Point stacks on the side of Gangstars, which are both incredibly important to how Gangstars want to win these fights. They want Iraqi Zoro to build up Breaking Point stacks. They want Xenotech to have, have high Broken Myth stacks. Fearsome Shade disengages those, and because of the changes to bro Breaking Point, the stacks drop more quickly now. So those few seconds that you get disengaged through Fearsome Shade, Massive, Whoop. massive They're going issue. in more again, Excoundrel. Lone Delphi, he is taking a beating, but he's able to position behind Starboy. There huge fear, huge stun! Gangstars are falling down. It's going to be a double treat, and it's going to be a Xenotech dropping. This is it. Nova, 
Tower are going to take it. We knew these guys were good, but they didn't have the chance to show that they were good at Scoundrel. And with a clean ace at the 22 second mark, this should be GG for Nova. My word, mind blown. Starboy's double disengage Echo Ultimate on, on the uh, Batiste, just so strong at putting pressure on a all-in engaged comp from Gangstars. They barrel in with the portal, they try to dive, nope, shut down immediately. And then when the chase begins, they keep that chase going by another fearsome shade coming out on top of that. That was so good. So, so good for Nova, the way that they were able to turn that round with that specifically. They played this so well into Gangstars, and I don't think Xenotech got enough of an early lead. I just don't think Xenotech ran away with it as much as he should, as he should have done on this Koshka in the jungle. And uh, Gangstars just kind of fell flat in the late game. Fantastic stuff coming from Nova. I know Starboy fans will be spamming Langley Champ, he he XD in chat because he was able to keep them alive in the late stages of the game. Nova, two points on the board, their first series win here in the VG8 and over none other than Gangstars. Well, there we have it. Nova just waiting for the stream buff. Apparently, they come in strong. They beat Gangstars 2-1 after a 0-4 scoreline so far. They have just come in huge and I honestly proven everybody wrong at this point. I feel it's safe to say, like, Nova, I'm impressed straight up. <laughs> yeah, that was an incredible performance from them. Able to take Gangstar 